Hi everybody, today I'm here with Peter Wilkinson from the Alliance for Journalists Freedom. And Peter, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for joining us. Perhaps you could just start off by telling us a little about what your organisation actually does. So the Alliance for Journalists Freedom's purpose is twofold. The first is to strengthen the role of journalists in Australia by um, working with politicians to change legislation. And secondly, overseas is to work with governments and other people when journalists are in trouble, either being threatened or in jail or worse. Now you're looking at the potential for voluntary certification for journalists. Why do we need that? Is it because there are concerns about the standards slipping? Uh, do, we, do we need certification to ensure that we get a particular standard of journalist? Just explain to me what that's about and why. Yeah, so it's partly to do with standards, but it's, it's an oversimplification to say it's just standards. The reason we want to have a certification, a voluntary certification program, is journalism is changing dramatically as is the environment that journalism works in. So we've got this massive overload of information and we've got citizen journalists, we've got randoms, we've got activists, we've got all types purporting to be journalists. That's the first thing and, and, and including um, publishing a lot of misinformation. The second is we've got a whole lot of niche publishers like The Informer um, who are coming up becoming more prominent because the internet allows very cheap access to become for a publisher um, to, to an audience. And so for those two reasons, we think it's a really good idea to have a voluntary certification program that includes training, includes the understanding of the code of ethics, includes um, a certification so that people can recognise that a person has performed to a certain level of training as a journalist. So it's not so relevant for the Australian or for News Limited or for Nine or for the ABC, although some of those people may want to do courses that we'll have on offer. And we're working with the Ethics Centre um, to establish this and we hope to be well advanced this year. How do you think consumers, news consumers, people um, who are consuming journalism in this brave new world, how will they benefit from this, do you think? Well, you, you don't want to look at voluntary certification on its own. It's part of um, a three-legged stool, if you like. The first part is certification. The second is we've defined what journalism is as opposed to what a journalist is. And journalism is the process that you go through in order to publish something where there's corroboration, there's fact checking, there's, um, there's a standard of writing and so on. So, that, um, so, and so that's the second point. The third leg is in a way the most important leg and that's a Media Freedom Act. So, since 9-11, there have been about 80 pieces of legislation in Australia that have been to do with national security. And many of them uh, penalise journalists, not by intent, but journalists are caught in the net. And so a Media Freedom Act is going to give, create a barrier for judges and politicians and others to recognise in the decisions they make the importance of journalism in a, in a democracy. So that, and the Media Freedom Act makes sense of the voluntary certification and, and the definition of who is and who is not practising journalism. So for instance, as you know, I run a corporate affairs consultancy, but on particular days, I can theoretically practise journalism if I follow the code of journalists that I learned when I was a journalist way back. So moving on from that, um, the average person, once again, 
will they benefit from actually uh, being able to uh, differentiate, I guess, between an article written by a certified journalist, choose their journalists if you like, uh, based on the certification? Will it, will it have that benefit for consumers, do you think? Absolutely, absolutely. The issue with journalism, as you know, is trust. And so all of this is focused on building trust. And it's no different from um, certified practicing accountants or fellows of colleges of surgeons, of which there are numerous, or the engineers or the pharmacy guild or a whole variety of professions that are certified. People have to qualify and reach a certain standard in order to separate themselves from the rabble. What we are doing is building trust in journalism. So if somebody is certified, the, the audience knows that they have achieved a certain level of excellence. It, it's not going to stop ratbag journalism, if you like. You're still going to get the same level or a level of, hopefully not the same level, but a level of inaccuracy because mistakes is a part of everybody's profession. Um, and people, as you know, learn from making mistakes. So you're not going to stop that altogether. But what you're going to do is make people understand that this particular person is practicing journalism, whereas this particular person who's a random on Facebook or is just a random blogger or an influencer, for instance, is not practicing journalism. Therefore, then the mastheads and the news agencies, there will definitely be flow on benefits to them as well, because then they can actually say, we have certified practicing journalists working for us. They have been certified to a standard. Totally, totally, totally. Um, the, the AJF has pushed, so the, the AJF's, for, the, the Alliance for Journalist Freedom's first big initiative was called a white paper. And I'd encourage people who are interested to go onto the website. And it had seven major reforms to do with um, protection of whistleblowers, to do with defamation, to do with suppression orders, and a, a whole variety of things that are really fundamental to journalist freedom. Protection of contact books. These kinds of things are, are really fundamental to a practicing journalist. And a lot of those initiatives are recognized by government. What, what we are doing with this three-legged school stool the definition of journalism the certification and the media freedom act is providing a vehicle for those initiatives so that people so that the reading public or the listening or watching public can understand that significant efforts are being made to distinguish journalism from the rabble and to improve the quality of journalism and therefore the trustworthiness of journalism where to now then? How do you see this rolling out? How do you encourage buy-in from journos and from news agencies uh, to become certified? What's the next step? Um, well, the next step, as I said, we're working with Dr. Simon Longstaff at the Ethics Centre and we've progressed to a certain point. We need to start selecting people to be on the board and to start putting the program together. That's the first step, and that'll happen this year. The, the, the next step after that is the rollout, and I don't think you're suddenly gonna get a flood of journalists wanting to be certified by this new program. It, it'll happen slowly, because as I said, it's voluntary. But certainly people who are leaving university and starting at the, you know, the Tibberborough Gazette or someone, somewhere in, Northwestern Victoria or something like that, who's just starting out and wants to upskill those or is starting a niche publication, say on, and it could be on celebrity, it could be on sport, it could be on business, it could be on news, it can be on anything in any of the cities and wants to upskill. Those are the people who will have a look at it and see if it's worth spending a few bucks just so that they can raise their standard and be rewarded for it. Mm. So what kind of time period are we looking at here? Um, I would hope to have it going by the end of 2023, and I would hope to have it having traction a couple of years later. 
A lot of it depends. There's a couple of things that are really important. One is <laughs> dollars. We need the money. Um, so there'll be a fundraising campaign. The second is we'll need, and it's very important that people understand this is independent of government. Um, the Media Freedom Act is an independent of government. We need the legislation, but the other aspects of it are completely independent and it has to be in a democracy independent of government. Um, um, but I see it as having significant rollout in four to five years. So I'm just going to throw a last question at you here, Peter. What do you, are you concerned about the, um, the professionalism of journalism, the, the, the standard of journalism that we're seeing these days? And do you think that has anything to do with the fact that uh, once upon a time, like myself, as a young reporter, I spent overnights listening to scanners in a newsroom and I worked my way up and understood every aspect of the business. How do you feel about that change? Do you think it's had an impact on journalism? It's having a huge impact on journalism. There's no doubt about that. And short term, it's been very dramatic and bad. Long term, though, I'm really optimistic. I'd encourage people to listen to a series of interviews we've done called the Future of Journalism series. There are, we've published 10 so far, and they look at they talk to various experts around the world on how they see the f journalism in 10 to 15 years. There are some pessimists, but the majority of people and the people I tend to agree with are optimists. And they see, because there's two things happening here. The first is democracy needs journalism to keep people in power in check. Absolutely. People in business, people in politics. The second is, People want to be journalists. Um, pe people are driven to people aren't driven to journalism for money. No, isn't um, that the truth? <laughs> they, they are driven to journalism because they have a passion for curiosity and for reform, for a better society. Um, I'm guessing from what you just said, that's why you went into it. That's certainly why I went into it, um, and. Um, to, to make a difference. And the biggest rewards I had when I was a journalist was to do a story that would make a difference to hundreds of thousands, if not to millions of people's lives. And that's what drives journalism. So I'm a supreme optimist um, in the future of journalism. What it's going to mean, it, though, is it's going to be different. The, the big global publishers this is speaking to people who are much wiser than me. The big global publishers like the New York Times and The Guardian are going to be success stories because they've got a global audience and so they can sweep subscribers. The small ones, the small publishers like The Informer and like um, a whole variety of niche publishers that are, are emerging, they will do well too because they've got a niche audience and it's exceptionally low cost. It's the middle-sized ones that are going to struggle. In Australia, the Australian, the Age, the Sydney Morning Herald, the Courier Mail, the Advertiser, et cetera, West Australia. They are going to struggle because they are trying to cater in their paper for everybody um, and being nece not necessarily very good at anything, if you know what I mean. Uh, and, and they will be knocked off by the niche publications that become very good at one thing. And what's, what's going to influence that is audience habits, because audiences now can search very easily. If you Google top five business publications in, in Australia, I'm not sure what happens, but you will get a choice of publications and they won't all be the Australian and the Fin Review. Um, and in the future, a lot of them will be niche publications and they'll be rated there'll be a rating system of some sort because apps will sweep data and acknowledge them in the same way that a bit, probably the, one of them will be a bit the same way as Reddit works, mm -hmm. where good quality stuff rises to the top. So there's, as I said, I'm very optimistic. That's really insightful and really interesting. I'd love to speak to you more about this, Peter, but we don't have the time today. Thank you so much for your uh, input and if people would like to know more, 
How can they find out more? Uh, go to the Alliance for Journalist Freedom website, journalistfreedom.com, and um, it's easy, the information that I talked about, particularly the future of journalism series, is easily accessible. Or you can email us if you have a question as well. There's a, there's a link there as well. Okay. We'd love, love to hear from people. What we're doing, I think, is very important. I couldn't agree more. Best of luck to you, Peter, and thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for joining us here on The Informer. We'll see you next time.